Hi, this is Vu Lee, and this is my phone rig, Vu's phone rig, aka the VPR 400, my patent pending design for smartphone dental photography. I'm very happy with the design. It took a lot of iterations. We're here in my garage because that's where I 3D print them. I still 3D print them, even, even in this uh, selling early selling phase of the product. We've decided to keep 3D printing them to keep my capital costs down to a minimum. Will we move to milling or molding or some other design process? Maybe, maybe not. But for now, uh, we are happy to keep making this way. We can custom make different colors, logos, and even other requests for our customers using this fabrication technology. So we really enjoy it right now. We can make a nice, resilient product. This chassis will survive, obviously an empty chassis, will survive a seven foot drop onto concrete and not break. So we are very confident in the design of our product. Now there are a couple different things about it, the design that I thought warranted a patent and also uh, that differentiate my product from the competition. The first are the two diffusers. Now all three products have dual flat plane lighting sources, but the PhotoMed SDB most notably lacks an offset diffuser option. What that means is that you just have the bare LED lights. Now the bare LED lights, you say, well, what's the problem with that? One, it hurts your eyes more. If I were to turn this up to actual working brightness, uh, you'll see that that's eye searing. So your patients aren't gonna like that as much. Um, these are still bright, but it's much kinder on the eyes when you have a single panel a single wider looking light source than if you were to um, a single light source than if you were to have separate LED elements. The other thing is when you look at the reflections in the teeth, especially if you're doing nice veneer work, uh, you'll notice that with separate LED elements, you'll get an orange peel or ripple pattern, which you will not get as much with a flat diffused light. And that's why professional set tabletop photographers and product photographers, they always use diffused LEDs. They never, ever, ever use bare LEDs uh, for professional product shoots. And you shouldn't really with professional tooth photos either if you think about it. Like I'm not a professional, you're getting paid for your work, you're a professional. You may not be getting paid for your photography, but I still consider you a at least a professional that photographs. Well, how about that? The other thing uh, that's important with the diffusers is they must be offset. So even if they, even if you clip a diffuser panel right to the LED, that doesn't blur the individual LEDs into one uh, cohesive rectangle. It makes them, they still, they still, you still see the separate light bulbs. You can't see it here in this video. Let me let me loosen it down so you can see it. Okay, so now you can see there with the panels directly on there you can see that you get separate light sources still. Um, you have to offset it in order to get the light diffusion to soften the reflections and the shadows on your images. So that's another important design element. Uh, the offset is very, very important. The other element is the magnetic retention. Now, what you see over here, as I turn the unit around, as you can see my iPhone 11 Pro here, it will, you see here, there's a good centimeter here, and that is roughly the width difference between, actually it's less than a centimeter, the, di the difference between the Pro Max and the 11 Pro, which both of whom will fit uh, on this. Any iPhone, people ask me all this time, and so I'll tell you, any iPhone Max, or plus will fit on this. Any Samsung Note will fit on this. Pretty much the only phones that might not fit on this are the crazy uh, Asus phones out of Asia that have eight inch screens, which I hardly even call phones anymore. But any phone with a 6.8 inch screen or below currently uh, will fit on this product. As long as the width of the phone is below about 78 millimeters, it'll clear this top edge. And if you have some freakishly wide phone, you can send me a message. I can make a couple design modifications and print you one that would fit. That's the beauty of 3D printing. So with that said, um, 
the design, the retention of the phone is by magnet. And this is something that's unique to my product. You've seen this a lot before in maybe on Amazon where you have these magnetic air vent mounts um, that mount your phone to your air vent so you can use your phone hands-free. Well, we've taken that same approach here. There are embedded rare earth magnets inside the phone rig, which allow you to snap on the phone rapidly and slide it off rapidly. You're saying, is my phone secure? Yes, it's quite secure. You can actually go like this and, you know, now you want, I think this shows it's plenty retentive. So I'm sitting here waving around my $1,400 phone. Why is a phone $1,400? That's another video. But you can see it's quite retentive. We're not worried about the phone falling off on this product at all. The magnetic retention is quicker than a clamp mount, the spring clamp mount that is on the SDB and the MDP. Both of those will be somewhat slower because you have to do a two-step motion to put them on and a two-step motion to take them off. This can be removed basically with one hand um, with a slide motion and slapped on with one hand uh, to mount it. The other feature that is different is the Bluetooth. On the MDP, there is no Bluetooth trigger option. Uh, actually, there's no handles. as By default, the MDP is handleless, and you can attach a handle to the tripod socket so you can have something to hold in the middle, but there's no Bluetooth option that I'm aware of. The SDB, SDP, SDB from Photomed has a Bluetooth handle in the center of it, and because it's stuck in the center, the phone can't be triggered with your thumb. We designed this so that the phone, so that Bluetooth is unnecessary. You can simply hold it like this and use your thumb to shoot it. Now, optionally, we have since added a Bluetooth trigger, but you don't have to have it, nor do you have to use it. So it's up to you whether or not you want to add that option to the, the product or not. We give you the choice. Uh, SDB, you have no choice. You must use it. And if your app doesn't support Bluetooth triggering for some reason, <clears throat> Invisalign, um, then you're stuck. So we wanted to give you that option. Um, I don't recommend any of these products without a handle. It's very awkward to hold them without a handle. If a staff member holds it by the phone accidentally, it doesn't matter if it's a clamp or the magnet, it's just not very secure. So um, we like having handles because it forces you and your team members to remember, hold it by the handles, never by the phone, okay? It doesn't matter which product you buy. Make sure you hold it by the chassis, not by the phone itself. The last thing is probably the, of my design that's probably different are the handles. The handles are dual handle. Dual handles come standard. That is the steadiest configuration for shooting video by far. Um, a lot of videographers would know that there's something called a fig rig where you have two handles spaced widely apart. Well, this isn't quite as big as a fig rig. But it's that same concept where you're holding two hands spaced widely apart. You'll see a lot of professional videographers use a two-handle configuration also. Um, so we have two handles. That's nice for video. You can remove or reverse the handles. If you say you don't want handles, you can just take one off. You can switch this trigger over to the other hand if you'd like to. You can store them upside down uh, if it stores better for you that way. Um, or you can just, if you for some reason want to hold it this way, I don't know why, but you can do that too. So you have lots of options here. So I hope in 10 minutes I've summed up most of the differences between the products. Primarily, you know, primarily you're going to notice handling differences. Uh, Price-wise, uh, my product is right around $400. Uh, the SDB, I think, is selling for a very reasonable $350, considering it's out of custom milled aluminum. I think I think it's a good value. The outlier is the Smileline MDP, which is uh, $600. Now, in fairness, they had to custom. They probably had to do the most engineering because they did custom engineer a motherboard, the LEDs, and the custom molding. So it probably did cost them the most to get the product to market. So whether or not that has any bearing to you, I don't think so. I think what, what matters to you most 
is which one will provide the most value for your practice. And to be honest, I think all of them will provide good value to your practice. Uh, which one will your staff like to use the most? And which one will hold up over time? Ask yourself these questions, and I hope that will help you make an intelligent buying decision. Good luck, and please, shoot, I don't care what you use. Photography makes dentistry better. Take care. Bye-bye.